it's crazy how labels sign influencers these days to yeah. me. Like it, it's so interesting, but you don't hear any conversations heavy about it. Like the influencers that are being signed by labels, I think Zia's people were actually pretty aware of. There's a decent awareness, but like so many of these smaller ones, curators, influencers, hey man, they they get a. From what I've hear, I've heard, typically it's not like a doesn't seem like a, a, a massive life changing amount for a lot of them. Yeah. But it's more like, hey man, you know, we'll, we'll keep throwing you some bread if you make yeah. sure you respond to the emails in a timely manner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll get your passes to all the festival. We'll make your lifestyle look look right. Lit, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, like. Exactly. <laughs> I want to I want to know what the signings look like. Right. Like, all right, if you had to sign. In a, a, an influence, cause, so like I wouldn't take a, a label deal. I mean, an exclusive deal if I was an influencer, right? Unless yeah. they were going crazy. Um, and the ones that I know who are signed, they don't have an exclusive deal. But if you were a label, how would you approach it? If I was a label, how would I approach like, someone influence? How influence? if I had to like just have it my way, and I'm gonna say I'm a what, what kind of influencers would you be going towards, uh, going at, and like what kind of deals would you try to break bread with them on? I think, so if I was the label, I would go after music reviewers, like people who just review music, any type of reaction channel or reviewers type of channel. Right. I would go after the music like blog promo pages, like Mm -hmm. so the Instagram accounts, the TikTok accounts, and I would go after meme accounts that have a music focused audience. So like there's one page I follow called Grand Wizard Chat nigga is built off the DJ Academics brand. It's a mean page, but he has a music focus on it. So like pages like that. Or that is another one called like Tyrone. Like Tyrone has a, which I actually think might be be owned by a really big entity. But if I was a label, I would go after those. Yeah. And so I think there'd be a couple of different ways I would try to do it. The pages, meme accounts, music pages, I would probably try to like outright buy and maybe just offer the creator like a really large like buyout deal, you know? Yep. Look at how much money you're making in a year. Okay, you generate 150K. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you, I don't know. Not even, most of them. Yeah, but let's just, you know, let's, let's, <laughs> okay, let's, let's let the big ones go, right? Probably try to bottom out right just so I could hire somebody internally. Yep. Or bottom out right and then give them a job. Like, yo, I'll give you, I don't know, 400K for the page and then hire you on under 85K a year salary or something to keep running right. the page, right? Um, but now we going to just keep it exclusive to our our artists, well, maybe not even that. Maybe even be like, yo, you can still take whatever promo money you get from it. But like, whenever we got some shit that need to go up on this page, that shit going up on this gas. Yeah, like, it's we gas, need, we yeah. need to press the gas. Yeah. And full blown. <laughs> this is coverage, daily news for this artist. That type of vibe. Yeah. yeah, them. I think the ones that have a brand, like their face attached to it. I don't know that that one. That one's that's a harder one because I think I think hiring them as almost like an employee, like a similar buyout model, and then turn them into an employee would probably be what makes the most sense as a label, but they're not going for that. You know what I'm saying? Like a smart one wouldn't go for that. Yeah. So I would probably just try to work out some type of a yearly lump sum where either I get a certain amount of artists I can push you that you have to do, or it affords me an extremely discounted promo rate. So if you typically charging 10 K per video, I want it for 800. You know what I'm saying? And in order to get it for 800, I'm willing to give you, I don't know, a hundred K up front right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, or something, because if I know how to, yo, I might have, you know what I'm saying, like I might push this one artist to you, shit, eight times this year alone, you know what I'm saying, that's gonna, that's gonna save me 80 bands, yeah, in that scenario, like 80 bands plus, you know what I'm saying, like in the, in the long run, so I'm willing to do that right now, if I know I got at least five or six like that, and I think a lot of influencers would do that, like if a label was like, yo, like, I'm gonna pay you to still pay you, it just needs to be a discounted rate, most of them gonna go for that, bro. like they gonna go for that, because I don't think they would be thinking of it the same way, but I don't know. I've never, I've never thought about it. I would, I would love to talk to like one of the ones that have done it and see like, because I feel like most of them just get hired, bro. They get like, bought, like almost like work. A whole lot of them look, get hired. Yeah. I think I like the buyout deal, like for the meme pages because the meme pages without having a face, you can damn near throw anybody. Yeah, anybody there. Know, yeah. I like keeping the same person in the role because they're already, you know, they know it. It's they the cost the of training and all that stuff. Yeah. You don't have to deal with any of that stuff. Just let them, let them rock. Right, keep them numbers up. And the complexity definitely comes for the individual influencer because the individual influencer has more of a brand to uphold, right? Mm-hmm. You can't just throw somebody and replace them. We've seen people do that, and it's a hard game, man, yeah. at bringing yeah. and introducing other people. You can't just dip dip off. But like, I think 
the lump sum deal is nice. I think it would be, I'll probably focus on orchestrated campaigns and somebody that makes sense for their brand. So you have to be a lot more selective. That's another reason why you can't just like buy them all out. Right. You'd have to say, all right, this person is great for this audience. And maybe I'm focused heavy on R and B or maybe I'm focused heavy mm -hmm. on rock. You know, if I'm going to somebody who's general, but impactful, let's go insert like Anthony Fantano, which he probably would never do that. But like, okay, those people would be one off. I would never try to buy them out. Cause it's just too, yeah. it's too much of a variety, yeah. but somebody who's like in my bag. So if I'm an indie label, especially I try to come up with some kind of relationship where you can curate because major labels are, I haven't seen them be good at, at truly, maybe they don't have the time to, or funny enough, the resources to really bring their attention to using a lot of those influencers right on the long yeah. term. But indie labels, like they're real, they, they're they creative. It. They get yeah. it. They, yeah. they get the shit. You know what I mean? I, mean, I think too, uh, a, a lot of the, at least the, situations I've seen in the past that I was pretty sure was the influencer signed to a major label is they go from being like you said like a trusted voice of the of the the E streets if you will right when it right. comes to music so it's like yo I know this guy put me onto a bunch of random stuff and then out of nowhere they just go to like only talking about bigger artists right or only covering bigger artists and it's like I don't think the labels realize when they make them make that change that they're killing off the the brand trust of the influencer so over time the value of the influencers it like it starts to decrease from the moment they start doing that mm, um yeah. and then it's like a lot of especially like music curators a lot of them maintain their reputation by being able to say like they were the first ones to talk about somebody right so right, right. so now if it's like i mean unless you was a label like you know of course i guess if you have your smaller artists you can still help them kind of maintain that that image that look, but it's like, they don't have the ability to like naturally go like, like there's a, there's a artist that pops every couple of months. They're like every music curator knows like, yo, if I don't make a post talking about this person, I'm gonna look out the loop. So I feel like when influencers get locked into these label deals where they can't talk about those artists, they look like they're out the loop. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. then their audience starts to lose trust in them and then it effectively, uh, basically making how effective they are like, like less, you know? And so I think that's what Speaking a lot of them of, are right? yeah. Speaking of, I think you, you touched on something why like TikTok cur curators have brought so much value to underground marketing again. Cause mm -hmm. one, we know the transferability from TikTok is stupid when like somebody just look when, when something happens on TikTok, it can move. So, yeah. and their curator impact is better than any of the other uh, curator impacts I've seen in yeah. the last like half decade. But because of that personal, out the loop aspect of things, you can truly activate a campaign and get people to talk about you without ever having to, well, I don't even say ever having to pay, but paying cheaper pages that they're following, right? Just to get discovered by them. And then yeah. because they got the FOMO, I gotta be the first to introduce them. Then you use that human behavior for them yeah. to go ahead and start putting you out into this, uh, you know, I was about to say manosphere, the <laughs> the artist sphere, the industry sphere, all all that stuff right there. Because because like once you get tap into human behavior, it wins. That's why the uh, the open verse challenges were so big for a yeah. second, right? Because now it's playing into an artist's ego for me to get seen, so I'm a flex, yeah, right. And then I see other people are actually getting attention from this, so that's even more important for me to get in. Oh well, dang, and I actually might end up on a track, right? That becomes even another game. So it. And at the end of the day, you get all this gain from people putting out your own songs. So yeah. it was just a perfect human behavior experiment. And when it, so like when you look at these curators, like because I feel like it hasn't been legitimate curators in the last five years. There hasn't been that many of them. It was like a deficit. But now with TikTok, it's a lot of like legitimate, yeah. like you know, upcoming curators that people truly look at for their opinion on music. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. almost because we know there were some pages on Instagram there were that curated music, but it almost wasn't cool for some for a while. Yeah, it was, uh, I think I, mean? I think the Instagram community theirs is a lot more like bloggish. Like you can tell it, it bars from like traditional right blog, blog. So TikTok right. feels more. It's like it yeah, feels like a million. I'm trying to think of a person like a million like I guess like DJ academics right it's just like all these that's what I'm saying these small personalities with faces attached to where it's like yeah Instagram is more like oh here's a 
he's a, a a big brand that is maintained. It's like like no different than like yep. a complex, right? Or yep. pigeons and planes or something. So I think I think that's the difference in it. Like TikToks feel a lot more personal because you can't really. Well, I mean, but even TikTok has like big, or well, it's starting to build a culture of like big music repost pages like Instagram. Like it's still in its infantile. Yeah, it's like hard it's, to be successful yeah. though. Yeah, it's very right. hard to be successful. Like I I think I maybe know of like four or five that do it really well that didn't already have a brand but like their own TikTok building a brand as a faceless faceless music curator very hard thing to do on TikTok very very that's what I'm saying that's (laughs) what I'm saying real curators are coming back because you are not a curator if you're a brand yeah there's no way a brand can legitimately be a real curator at scale most of them at least Mm -hmm. right because you know it becomes more commercial and people don't really know who they're trusting and these and it, it just doesn't work colors has probably been the best i've seen like in the modern era and space i was like colors and colors and probably pigeons and planes pigeons and planes i don't consider them modern anymore oh man you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. they're they're current you know yeah, what i mean they're still yeah. doing their thing and they're some yeah. of the best you know yeah. what i mean yeah. but yeah like they've been around in the game for yeah. a minute you know that. what i mean I feel that. I feel and that. Colors has too, but like colors is still like catching a new wave because of the video format and all that stuff. Yeah. Pigeon planes isn't that; it's traditional, right? But I'm saying like, like when you go back, the DJs used to be curators. Yeah, it was a person, and you know if I go listen to this dude, this dude's set's gonna go a certain way. Yeah. this guy has a certain type of taste. You know what I mean? That actually means something versus, and when you listen to these individual curators on TikTok, it's another person. Again, I already know what he vibes with, the type of stuff he hates, especially the ones who do commentary, right? Yeah. Like what they don't like. I, and I, and just like a news story where you might watch four or five different channels or four or five people talk about the same issue, like I'm willing to now go see what that curator thinks. It's like, yeah. I know this guy thinks that way, yeah. but I wonder if he's rocking with the new Kendrick Lamar track or the new Yeet shit or whatever it is, you know? 